Welcome into DRF Daily, DRF Sports' daily betting live stream coming at you every single weekday at around 11 a.m. We're handing out some winners. We're handing out some best bets each and every weekday using DRF Sports Pro data to inform our decisions. If you love the data and you want to get in on the action, head to drf.com slash sports and click the register link up in the top right corner. You can also sign up for our newsletter that's hitting your inbox every single weekday as well with some best bets. You can sign up for that in the bottom right corner. And if you don't want to commit to all of that, you can follow us on Twitter at DRF underscore sports. If you're watching on Twitter, thank you so much for tuning in. You can also uh, keep up to date on YouTube. Just type in DRF Sports on YouTube. Uh, Like and subscribe there. And you can keep up to date with live betting live streams coming at you every single weekday on Twitch. Do whatever you do on Twitch as well. And if you're watching on Twitch, thank you for tuning in. In We have a chocked full slate of MLB best bets today. We're starting with Rays, Reds. Going from there, we're going up into the Northeast, Yankees, Red Sox, and then Blue Jays, Mariners, a 10-10 late start, looking to uh, finish our night off with a bang. Those are our three MLB best bets. And if you stick around long enough, our featured free game of the day, it's the game everyone's been clamoring for, honestly. It's Brewers Pirates. I mean, who doesn't want some free data when it comes to the Brewers and the Pirates? I know I do. I want to dive deep into a Milwaukee-Pittsburgh showdown. So that'll be our featured free game of the day. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's it for the weekend. We have, we have some fantastic stuff coming your way over on drf.com slash sports. A lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipe for you all with DRF Sports. So without further ado... Let's break down these games. Let's start off with Rays Reds. 45 and 37 Rays looking to keep pace in the AL East, uh, looking to pull away a bit from the Red Sox who lost last night to the Yankees. They're taking on the lowly Cincinnati Reds. Reds are plus 155 tonight in Cincinnati. First pitch slated for 6.40 p.m. Shane McClanahan gets the start for Tampa. Luis Castillo gets the start for the Reds. So, Let's see who has the edge in this one. We're going to go over to drf.com slash sports. Look at all of this fantastic information. Um, our power line makes it about minus 168 for Tampa. So not a lot of change there as the line from Vegas is at minus 165. This is game one of the series. Um, and coming into tonight, the Reds have rotated wins and losses over their last six, going three and three, finding no real rhythm. Meanwhile, Tampa's five and one over its last six. Uh, Shane McClanahan, a left-hander, nine and three with a one seven four ERA. The Reds this season have been uh, atrocious, not only overall but also against left-handed pitchers. They're ten games below. Well, they're yeah, 10 games below 500. They're sitting at 7 and 17 against left-handers and they average less runs per game. They hit the ball a little bit better, but they just aren't able to create runs against left-handers. So with all of that, the pick for tonight is going to be Tampa Bay minus 165 against the Reds. There's not a lot happening as my dog is whining in the background. There's not a lot of um not a lot more to say about this game. I mean, Luis Castillo is coming in with a, um, where is he? 3.439 ER, 3.09 ERA. So not a bad pitcher, Luis Castillo, but when he's going with Shane McClanahan and a solid Rays lineup, give me the Rays all day, every day. I don't think the Reds can pull off this upset. Moving from there, we're going into the game of the weekend, and it's the game of the day each and every single day up until Sunday when they finish off this four-game set in on ESPN. Yankees play the Red Sox. Yankees 60 and 23, coming off of a fantastic uh, game one win of this series. They're now three and one against Boston this season. Boston still has uh, a winning record against the Yankees over the last three seasons in Boston. But the Yankees, fantastic game last night, highlighted by Josh Donaldson's grand slam. Uh, Garrett Cole went 
six innings, I believe, five earned. So not a fantastic outing from the Yankees ace, and they still got the win. That was also without Aaron Judge in the lineup or Anthony Rizzo. They still might be out tonight, which I think is why the Yankees are minus 130 and not a little more because our power line thinks there is some fantastic value in Yankees Red Sox tonight in favor of the Yankees. It's actually now minus 140, so it's coming down in the Yankees' favor. Um, but there's still a lot of value there if you're going Yankees minus 140, minus 130, whatever your book is saying. The power line makes this minus 246 in favor of the Yankees, so a lot of value on New York, on the Bronx Bombers. Nestor Cortez, the the man. Nestor Cortez gets the start for the Yankees. He's 7-3 and this season with a 2-4-4 ERA. And getting the start for Boston's Connor Seabold, and this is an absolute pitcher mismatch. Seabold 0-1 this season. 8.3 ERA. This is going to be just his third start of the season. And he's going up against Nestor Cortez, the man, the myth, the mustache, who is 7-3 with a 2-4-4 ERA. Cortez has struggled a little bit over his last three starts. He just had one decision, which was a win, but he has like a 4.09, something like that, a 4-plus ERA. So not a fantastic last three showings. Cortez had a fantastic start to the season. And uh, nevertheless, going up against Connor Seabold, uh, who's 0-1 with an astronomically high ERA, I'm favoring Nestor, with also the fact that there's rumors, there's rumblings, Judge and Rizzo, or half of that duo will be back in the lineup, and pair that with the fact that they were able to hang up six runs on the Red Sox last night without Rizzo, without Judge, Josh Donaldson steps up. I think Joey Gallo had a solid day. So give me the Yankees, minus 140 here, possibly an over, um, maybe, just because Siebold isn't that great. I think the Yankees are going to be able to get to him, hit a couple dingers, and uh, put up some runs, and I think the Red Sox will keep pace. Like I said yesterday on this game, I think this is going to be another fantastic game. I mean, when these two play each other, the best come out of both. But um, Yankees 3-1 and one against Boston. They've had Boston's number. They're now, I think, 1-0 and oh in Boston this season at Fenway. I really like the value for the Yankees. If you get Judge back, if you get Rizzo back, if you get both back, I think this number falls drastically down. I think it goes to minus 200 very quickly for the Yankees. But as of right now, you can get it around minus 130, minus 140. And even without Rizzo and Judge, I think that's that, that's some fantastic, fantastic value as the Yankees are the cream of the crop in the MLB this season. Moving on from Yankees, Red Sox, we're going into Blue Jays, Mariners. And I just have to pose the question to everyone. Are the Mariners back? Is this the mid-season Mariners? I think it might be. Uh, last three, the Mariners have won outright as the underdog. They've won eight of their last nine. They won last night against the Blue Jays. They were plus 100 last night. It's about minus 107, minus 105 apiece for these two. Ross Stripling gets the start for the Blue Jays. George Kirby will be getting the start for the Mariners. Stripling this season is a 3-3 three and three with a 3-1-6 ERA. George Kirby, on the other hand, a 2-3 record with a 3-7-5 ERA. So some solid, not great, but solid pitching coming into this one. I'm going to go Mariners. Um, last two seasons, the Mariners are 24-6 and six straight up against teams that are fantastic in the field. They commit less than half an error per game, and that's the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are a really buttoned-up defensive team, especially out in the field. Um, and pair that with the fact that Seattle, over these last three, where they've won uh, straight up as underdogs, they've won those by six runs, four runs, and five runs, respectively. They beat the Blue Jays last night by five. And tonight, I'm getting them at minus 107. Our power line actually thinks um, at some good value on the Mariners as they make this more like minus 129. Odds have shifted just a little bit over the last 30 minutes. Toronto now plus 100. Seattle has now become the favorite at minus 110. Just about an hour ago, the Blue Jays were minus 108, and they were favored on the run line. Now the Mariners are minus, 10, minus 110, and uh, our simulator thinks it's about a 4-4 game. Very even, 
But the Seattle offense, which had been struggling all season, has come up big as of late. Toronto averages more runs. They have the more potent offense. But I have faith in George Kirby, and the midseason Mariners are a real thing. I think they're going to turn it around, pick up a few more wins ahead of the All-Star break, and then I think we'll see in the second half of the season. They'll make a real push to the postseason. So give me the Mariners in this one at minus 107. I'm, I'm going with George Kirby. I think there's a lot of faith to be had in the Mariners, especially as they're rounding into mid-season form. So those are our three MLB best bets. We're going Tampa minus 165. We're going Yankees minus 130. And we're going Mariners minus 110. We really like the favorites here in this MLB best bets portions of today's DRF Daily. So you can find all of that data on drf.com slash sports. We can register up in the top right corner, or you can just check out all of the free data we give out on a daily basis. But if you want real insights, real in-depth analysis, real in-depth betting angles and trends, go ahead and register. Some fantastic insights coming your way on drf.com slash sports.